Good evening, Chair. Calls to order public hearing for Bill 23-032, tax credit for properties near refuge disposal system. Mr. Sandlitz, Mr. Richardson, whenever you're ready. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. Um, for the record, Lawrence A. Richardson, Jr., Harper County Government, Office of County Executive, uh, members of the Council with me today. I have Robert Sandlis, Treasurer for Harford County, who is here to provide um, some information relative to the uh, bill before you right now. Thank you. So this is a bill that comes before the Council uh, each and every year, but this is the first time that it comes in front of uh, this Council, and it's something that we've been doing since um, the early 90s, and that is to provide a full county property tax credit for those properties that are near um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the county-owned refuse disposal system up in, up in Scarborough. And more or less the idea here is that, that the county uh, needs to have a, a landfill, and, but of course a lot of those costs are disproportionately borne by the individuals who, who reside um, or near in the form of additional uh, traffic and uh, noise and all of those things. Um, so we are required to bring this legislation uh, before January of each year. This is for the upcoming um, tax year that will start on July 1, and there are 36 properties that are um, owner-occupied and that qualify uh, for that for being 1,000 feet by the um, uh, in proximity to, uh, to the landfill. Uh, the estimated cost for this will probably be about $80,000. This year there were 35 uh, for 74000 It fluctuates from year to year by one or two as properties become uh, owner-occupied or not owner-occupied, but it's generally in that, in that vicinity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sandlison. In the past, I know we've had to track some folks down, but understand that that's not as uh, not as bad this year. Yeah, we've gotten a lot better now at, at getting all of the um, the email addresses and phone numbers. Um, and you know, sometimes you know we have to send out a couple of reminders. And uh, if all else fails, we we turn to the local uh, councilman. Um, but this year we did not have to do that. But stay tuned for next year because you never know. <laughs> okay, uh, council. At this time, anyone have any questions? Mr. Ben? This is more so a curiosity, but with this going on for so long, has you or anybody in the county noticed any trend for the property owners as far as like when people have moved, has this uh, tax credit made it easier for them to make the property uh, desirable to purchase or you know, like has it been a benefit to the homeowners in those kinds of ways? I mean, I, to the extent that, they're, that they are receiving um, you know, a few thousand dollar tax credit, that's certainly beneficial. As far as the number of homes, I mean, I'm not sure if there's been an increase of individuals who would say, let me, let me go out of my way to buy there so that I don't have the, the property, tax, um, property tax concern. Because again, you know, there's a whole lot of negative externalities that they have to deal with. And we, it generally bounces around that 35, 36 number. So I mean, some years 37, some years 34. But um, you know, there's about 60, what do I have? 60, I think there's 60, yeah, there's 65 total properties within the 1,000 feet. Um, and you know, the maximum, though, that could be owner owner occupied, because there's some that are owned by the county, um, is is 51. So mm -hmm. it, again, it bounces around. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Anyone else? Miss Dixon, do we have anyone signed up? There are no speakers, Mr. President. Very good. This will conclude this public hearing, and we'll take this up at a later date. Thank you, gentlemen. President Kent, thank you very much. So we're going to take a 10-minute recess. Good evening, Chair. Calls to order legislative session day 23-28. Uh, please join us for the pledge, followed by the opening prayer by Council uh, Member Jan Giordano. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we ask you to help orient all our actions by your inspirations. Carry them on by your gracious assistance that every prayer and work, our, and work of ours may always begin from, your, from you and through you be happily ended. I ask you to look over our veterans as we honor them this upcoming Saturday. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Agenda item number four, presentation of proclamations. This evening, uh, we're honored to have two of our uh, deputies here this evening receiving awards. Uh, if I may, I'd like to start with Deputy First Class Nicholas Marks. Please come forward. And anyone that you'd like to bring with you, Mr. Marks. Down now. 
um, in just a second. Yes, I do actually. Yeah, you would all come down. Mr. Jan Giordani, whenever you're ready. Whereas on Wednesday, February 16, 2022, Deputy First Class Nicholas Marks was traveling on Philadelphia Road when he observed a vehicle crash just east of his location. He noticed that it was a serious multiple vehicle crash, took immediate action, and began rescue efforts. And whereas DFC Mark observed that both vehicles' engine bays were fully engulfed in flames, knowing the extreme danger of a vehicle fire, he still approached the remaining occupied vehicle to res rescue the occupants without regard for his own safety. As up other deputies arrived on the scene, it was discovered that there was still a child in the vehicle where the driver was just rescued. DFC Marks returned to the burning vehicle, located and removed the child to a safe location. Had it not been for the actions of DSC Marks during this incident, the citizens involved were at risk of losing their lives. DFC Marks displayed conspicuous gallantry above and beyond the call of duty where he intervened during this life-threatening incident and whereas due to his heroic actions, DFC Marks was recognized by the National Sheriff's Association as the 2023 Deputy of the Year for Valor and recently recognized as one of the four finalists for the International Association of Chiefs of Police for Police Officer of the Year. He was also proclaimed the runner-up for the 2023 award with three other officers from Houston, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Now, therefore, we, the County Council of Hartford County, Maryland, on the 7th day of November, 2023, do hereby salute Deputy First Class Nicholas Marks, Hartford County Sheriff's Office, and extend our sincerest, sincerest appreciation for his dedication to the safety and security of the citizens of Hartford County. So if I may, I know you've been recognized all across the country for your efforts, but we thought it was important to recognize you here at home and tell you how much we appreciate all that you and your fellow uh, deputies do uh, to protect and serve uh, this community every day. So uh, congratulations, thank you, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the sheriff. I just would like to thank the council first for taking the time to recognize Deputy Marks, uh, Deputy First Class Marks, and as we will, uh, Captain Scott Walter in a few minutes. Uh, standing on not just the national stage, there's roughly 3,500 sheriff's offices across the state, across the country, um, and this is the third time that a member of the Harford County Sheriff's Office in the last nine years has won Deputy of the Year. Um, but this one was for Valor, and which is uh, outstanding, uh, standing on the stage with Nick and his wife Heather hidden back here uh, at the uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan during the annual conference was an honor. And then to be, a, to be nominated, the International Association of Chiefs of Police is just what it says, international, global. Uh, to be one of the top four police officers in the world um, is remarkable to come from our community and show indicative of the work done by our men and women every single day. So I want to congratulate Nick, and you can't do it without a great family and, and Heather who's hiding back there. And again, the council for taking the time to recognize him tonight. I just think it's amazing that uh, we have such dedicated uh, officers that just disregard for the seems like almost like a disregard for your own safety you ran into that fire you took one person out and you realized there was somebody else there and you went back in i mean that just sa says just unbelievable courage and valor you're to do that and and uh you know it just shows what what love we have in this in this county so we appreciate all your hard efforts
Photoshop. If I may, Captain Scott. Whereas Captain Scott Walter Jr. of the Hartford County Sheriff's Office has been with the Sheriff's Office for over 20 years. During his career, he has served in various divisions with the organization, including Traffic Unit, Gang Unit, Special Operations Division, Motorcycle Unit, and Patrol Division. In addition to working within these divisions, Captain Walter is also a motorist instructor, defensive tactics instructor, drill instructor, firearms instructor, and polygraph examiner, and whereas Beyond serving Hartford County as a law enforcement officer, Captain Walter is a role model and pillar of his community. He has devoted hours to working on charitable events at the Moose Lodge for fundraising events, volunteering for the Valor Pro Program, and making countless presentations on his own time at elementary schools. And whereas throughout his distinguished career, Captain Walter has received numerous accolades, commendations, and awards for his outstanding service, including the HCSO Valor Award and the Maryland Smooth Operator Enforcement Award. He has demonstrated a remarkable ability to inspire and motivate his subordinates to achieve their full potential. His leadership style is characterized by compassion and respect for those under his command and his tireless dedication to their welfare and professional growth. And whereas Captain Scott Walter Jr. was recently named one of the International Association of Chiefs, IACP, 40 under 40 police leaders worldwide. Now, therefore, we, the County Council of Hartford County, Maryland, on the 7th day of November, 2023, do hereby salute Captain Scott Walter Jr., 40 un under 40 police leaders worldwide, and extend our sincerest appreciation for his dedication for the safety and security of the citizens of Hartford County. So uh, congratulations uh, as well to you, and um, I've seen firsthand uh, all of you, the involvement that you have throughout our county and the value that you bring to all of us, and I can't thank you enough for all that you do. Uh, and with that, again, I'm going to turn it over to the sheriff. And I'll just offer again, Tony G said it, uh, the, again, worldwide, the Nas International Association of Chiefs of Police recognized Scott as being one of the top 40 future leaders in this profession. None of us are getting any younger. Uh, we have to turn to the next generation. And having this level of talent and others amongst our command staff here and in futures um, like uh, Deputy, D Deputy First Class Marks shows me as sheriff that our future here in Harford County is in good hands. And am I allowed to talk about hands? Yes. Not just one good hand. Just one good hand. <laughs> Scott fell last night at home, so among all his training thing was not how to work a ladder at home in the garage. His hand's broken in three places, and yet he, he, he thought enough of this presentation by the council, the council taking the time to recognize uh, him and uh, the, the IACP award uh, with their own proclamation that he put on his uniform and came out tonight to be with us. He won't be allowed to wear that uniform until he gets the hand fixed after tonight. <laughs> But uh, that's how much it means to him to be a, a member of the sheriff's office and a member of your community. So which hand is it? So well, I'm left-handed, so we'll, we'll go left. There you go. There, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for all you did, for all you do for the county, uh, for the citizens. Appreciate it. Uh, amazing, all that stuff for under 40. Um, I was going to say you, you look under 30. So, uh, But, no, really, sincerely, we, we do appreciate that. I think we have the best police force uh, in the state, probably in the country. We know people are coming here all the time now, they want, they want to work for the sheriff and, and in this organization. So people like yourself that we appreciate and all your dedication and hard work, so thank you.
So if I may, we're going to take a picture here real quick, and then I'm going to ask the members of the command staff to come up. Say I move. Agenda item, whoops. Agenda item number five, consideration of petitions, applications, appointments, and nominations. Uh, council appointment 2024, make a legislative committee representative and alternate. May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move to appoint Council Member Penman as Council Representative for the 2024 MACO Legislative Committee and Council Member Riley as the alternate. Second. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. It's been moved and seconded to approve the appointments of Council Member Penman and Council uh, Representative uh, Riley uh, to the MACO Board. Uh, any discussion? If I may, I. This past year, uh, Mr. Pemmon has served us well down in Mako. Uh, when we had our Mako representatives here, uh, County Executive Calvin Ball and Michael Sanderson, they spoke uh, to, the, to the relationship that they had, and we appreciate that very much and looking forward to a continuous of that over the next year. Um, Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jandrodano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bullsaddles. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative, the appointment is hereby approved. Police Accountability Board, um, may I have a motion, please? Council President, I move to approve the new appointment of Joe Ryan. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. It's moved and seconded to approve the new appointment of Mr. Joe Ryan. Is there any discussion? Again, if I may, I'd like to recognize Mr. Ryan in the audience um, and uh, Mr. Lambeck as well, who serves on that board. Uh, I want to thank you both uh, for your um, willingness to serve. And Mr. Ryan, I want to recognize you and thank you for all that you've done uh, throughout the county, not only as a law enforcement officer, but also uh, in your volunteer work throughout the county. So uh, thank you very much, Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie? Aye. Mr. Penman? Aye. Mr. Jandrodano? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Bullsaddles? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero and a negative, the appointment is hereby approved. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Executive appointment, Citizens Nursing Home Board of Directors, Mr. Bennett? Uh, Council President, I would uh, move to approve James Rodney Swam as a member of the uh, Citizens Nursing Home Board of Directors. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Jandrodano. Um, 
It's been moved and seconded to approve the new appointment of Mr. Swam uh, to the Citizens Nursing Home Board of Directors. Is there any discussion? Mr. Bennett. Um, I just appreciate that this is finally moving forward so uh, citizen care can have a full board. Um, this is something that I know Mr. Walter over at Citizens Care is very happy about and the board is uh, very excited to have full membership now. So I uh, thank you to the county executive for moving this over. Exactly. Anyone else? Um, I too would like to thank the county executive. I personally know Mr. Swam. He's a lifelong resident of Harford County and Haverty Grace and he will do an ex outstanding job on behalf of the citizens. So, um, Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jandrodano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bullsaddles. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative, the appointment is hereby approved. Agenda item number six, special presentations, we have none. Seven, approval of minutes, Board of Health Fall 2023 update. Public hearing October 17th, 2023. Legislative day 23-027, October 17th, 2023. Are there any corrections to the minutes? There being no corrections, the minutes stand approved. Agenda item number eight, introduction and consideration of resolutions, we have none. Mr. Vice President, please read uh, for introduction bill 23-034. Bill 23-034, Distribution Hotel Occupancy Tax Revenue, introduced by Council Members Guthrie, Penman, Riley, Boyle Siles, and President Vincenti. An act to repeal and reenact with amendments Section 123-68, Distribution of Revenue of Article 7, Hotel Occupancy Tax of Charter 123, Finance and Taxation of the Hartford County Code, as amended to require 50% of hotel tax revenue collected from hotels and unincorporated areas of the county to be expended for certain purposes in the council district where the hotels are located and generally relating to hotel occupancy tax and finance taxation. Public hearing scheduled for December 5th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in these council chambers. Thank you, Mr. Janitor. Denner, please read uh, Bill 23-035 into the record. Bill 23-035, county employees mid-year pay increases introduced by Council President Vincenti <clears throat> at the request of the County Executive. An act to make an appropriation of funds of the General Fund, Highway Fund, Parks and Recreation Fund, Watershed Management Fund, and Water and Sewer Fund for the current fiscal year to provide the necessary funding to cover estimated expenses to be incurred during fiscal year 2024 attributable to, attributable to the pay increases for employees of Hartford County Government public hearing scheduled for December 5th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in these council chambers. Thank you. Um, also, please read in amendments 1 through 15 uh, to Bill 23-027. <clears throat> amendments 1-15 to Bill 23-027, introduced by council members Jan Giordano, Riley, Guthrie, and President Vincenti. Amendment number one, on page two in line three, strike R4 zoning district and substitute R4 and B3 zoning district. In the B3 zoning district, garden departments are limited solely to the locations entirely within the boundaries of the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number two, on page two in line 13, after apartments, insert in the B3 zoning district, garden apartments uses shall be permitted as a special development only in the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number three, on page three in line 11, strike the opening bracket. Amendment number four, on page three in line 14, strike the closing bracket. Amendment number five, on page three in line 11, after development, insert of garden apartments. Amendment number six, on page three, in line 12, strike development envelope and substitute boundaries of the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number seven, on page four, in line 18, strike classification and substitute classification in quotations and in the same line after, in quotations, dwelling, insert, in quotations, the B3 column is amended to permit them as a special development permitted use only in a Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number eight on page four in line 18 after 
and insert in parentheses the line for use classification. Amendment number nine. That, that was in a parentheses. Quotations. Insert in, uh, in quotations the line for use classification. Amendment number nine on page four in line 19, strike uses and substitute use. Amendment number 10 on page four in line 20, strike seven and substitute eight. Amendment number 11 on page five in line one, strike in brackets and in the same line strike deletions and substitute changes. Amendment number 12 on page five in line eight, strike three and substitute four. Amendment number 13, <clears throat> on the title page, strike beginning with, unless in the sixth line down through, 267-76 in the seventh line and substitute, except for garden apartments located within the boundaries of the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number 14, on the title page, strike beginning with, unless in the 11th line down through plan, in the 12th line and substitute, except for garden apartments located within the boundaries of the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor. Amendment number 15, on attachment A, permitted use chart, title 267, attachment 19, uh, colon dash 12, in the use classification line titled garden apartment dwellings in the B3 column, strike the brackets. And after? Hey, there's more to it. <clears throat> And after SD, insert three. Thank you. Um, due to the timing, these amendments will be considered this evening, so may I have a uh, motion to accept amendments one through 15 to bill 23-027. Council, President, I move to approve amendments one through 15 to bill 23-07. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. <laughs> Been moved to and second moved and seconded to approve amendments one through fifteen to Bill twenty three dash zero twenty seven. Is there any discussion, Mr. Bennett? Um, I appreciate uh, Council President Vincenti sitting down with me tonight to talk me through the amendments. Um, I found that really helpful to to look at a map together and um, identify those properties that would be permitted for garden apartments across Route 40 in the Science and Security Corridor. Um, but I was just thinking with so many people in the audience, it might be helpful to to speak to the amendment some, just so that people understand. You know, only listening what what it is we'll be voting on in just a minute. If 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 you would like to. So we're ahead. Well, you want uh, me to? Yeah, sure. So it, it, in our time listening to the citizens uh, across the county, it's very evident that there's a place and a time for apartments. And we feel like if they're going to be allowed, it is along the Chesapeake Science Security Corridor. Uh, not everyone can afford a home. We do believe that um, uh, apartments are needed still here in the county. Uh, we don't agree with what's happened in Hickory. Um, it's very evident it's out of place. And no one that I've talked to uh, believes that's a, that's a good fit. So that's the purpose of these amendments. Anyone else? Mr. Jan Jordana. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I know we worked uh, pretty hard on this, probably a couple months from before. I think it was evident, as Council President said, nobody liked the idea of uh, all of a sudden finding out that there was a five-story apartment complex is being built in Hickory. Um, that was to my surprise in Councilman Riley's when we went in to look at another project that they were looking at on, uh, on Route 24 and we happened to notice what was going on and we asked the question, what is that? And somebody said, well, that's apartments. And we were like, what? So um, this bill <laughs> takes it back to 2008. Mm -hmm. um, prior to 2008, there was no apartments allowed in the B3 zoning. Um, there was a with public hearing back then. There was uh, a bunch of lawyers that came in, talked about it, um, and one of them said that, um, uh, you know, the proposed code is balanced and that changes could be made in the future. So this is changes being made in the future to bring it back to where it was before so that there's no apartments being built in, in the B3 zone. Um, so um, 
Council President. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Riley. Yes, when, when me and Councilman uh, G. Giordano went to look at those maps, I tried to do everything I could to stop it. It had already been approved in 2017, so there's no way as District D, because that's where it happens to reside, that I could stop it. Uh, but I want to make sure it doesn't happen going forward. Anyone else? Ms. Mr. Bennett. And, and just to clarify for those who aren't familiar with the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor, that's uh, located directly around uh, Route 40. So, you know, that's a uh, you know, proper placement to have resources near apartments, uh, transportation, and, and uh, you know, bus supports near apartments, um, you know, ample schools and, and businesses and grocery stores near apartments. Um, so that was the idea behind, behind allowing garden apartments across there, in case anybody didn't know what the Chesapeake Science and Security Corridor is. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jandrodano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Ms. Bullsaddles. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the, ne in the negative, amendments one through 15 are hereby approved. Um, Council Member Penman, please read amendments one through three into the record. Amendment number one on page one and line nine after uh, four, strike three and substitute two. Amendment number two on page one and line 13, strike three and substitute two. Amendment number three on page one and line 15 after four, strike three and substitute two. If I may, Mr. President, I yes. just want it to be clear that it's, these are amendments one to three for Bill 23028. My, my apologies. Not, not previous bill. Yes, no, my apologies, that's correct. Um, so again, uh, with a timing issue, these amendments will be considered this evening too. So uh, is there a motion to approve? Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Stiles. It's been moved and seconded uh, to amend, or the amendments uh, one through three to bill 23-028. Is there any discussion? Mr. Jandrodana. So this, this takes the bill that, uh, that I introduced that has three terms with uh, one term coming off um, and, then come, and then you can run again, uh, whether it's four years, eight years, 12 years, 20 years to come back on the council. Um, if the citizens choose to put you back on the council, then they'll put you back on the council. Uh, originally, Council Penman came out with uh, three terms in February last year. That bill never made it to the floor. He pulled it the night before. Uh, it did come out a second time. Uh, a few months later, there was gonna be an amendment then to uh, make the term three years with succession and he decided to pull that bill at that time as well. So this bill goes back, compromise. It is three terms, and it is with succession, meaning that, you know, if somebody comes back, if uh, Jacob has, you know, gets off the council and 20 years later he wants to run again, he could do that. If Dion's off the council and 20 years he wants to run again. Let's oh. hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> Pushing up daisies. So, but I, I, I think it lets I think it lets the people choose who they want to run. I mean, it's been, you know, if somebody doesn't want a councilman to, to, to be here, he's not going to be here. Curtis was on the council. Um, Jacob had very little money. Jacob won. Curtis is not here anymore. Rob Wagner was on the council many times. He Do ran you? again. Jessica beat him. He's not on the council anymore. So, it, it, it's a it's a pretty good system the way it stands with people voting for who they want and not who they want. So I, I am uh, not in favor of, of Aaron's amendments. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Penman. Um, look, I appreciate, uh, Tony, I really do appreciate the conversation of term limits because uh, prior to uh, taking office in this council, there was no discussion on term limits. And uh, Tony's right. Uh, I introduced this bill on two occasions. The first bill reflected this, two terms. You take one term off and you can come back for two more terms. That's exactly what we have for the county executive and why should the county council be any different? In the sake of compromise, I did three terms, but there's no sequential number. You can't come back. Um, that bill uh, essentially failed because I made an agreement that I would have four votes for it. I did not have four votes and I honored the words that I said. So uh, we re reintroduced the bill when I did, or I believed I have four votes, 
Um, and then it was going to get an amendment to this. Three terms, you take one off, and you come back for three more terms. That's not term limits, folks. It's not term limits. It's not what anybody else thinks is term limits. It's not what the president has. It's not what the county executive has. And we need two terms. And while this amendment may fail tonight, there may be two questions on the ballot. Two questions, whether it's this one or whether it's two terms. But I am 100% uh, sure I will get 10,000 signatures and two terms will be added to the ballot. So that's the history of it, but I do appreciate the conversation. Mr. Guthrie. Um, this has been a long conversation and um, I hate to say it over something really small. And if you know, I did, a, I did a survey on this whole process a while back. If you look up there, all those pictures, um, and count these council members sitting up here, the, since we've had this type of, of uh, government in Harford County, uh, there has been 51 council members sitting in these seats, including these seven people. Of those 51 council members, 39 of the 51 only serve two terms or less by either losing, deciding not to run again, et cetera, et cetera. The 39 represents 76.5% of the people who have sit in these seats have only run for two terms or less. And that's 39 people. Four council members have served three years. Seven council members have served four. Four terms, I'm sure, four terms. I'm going to be one of them, so I'll probably, that'll probably go to eight. We've only had one council member over served 20 years, and that was Bob Wagner who just left. So it, it's, uh, it, it was, we have spent a lot of time discussing this and working on it, uh, but it, it seems when you take a look at 76.5% uh, of the people who have served up here have all served two terms or less by their own Either they lost the election or they decided not to run again or they went to Annapolis or they died or wherever else happened, you know. Um, so I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a lot of discussion, a lot, a lot of, um, uh, it, excuse the term I give it, feel good legislation, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, because we uh, are, are uh, good uh, legislators up here, we'll, we'll handle the process accordingly. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Guthrie. Mr. Bennett. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, one of the things I just consider if these amendments, you know, again, thinking statewide when we look at other counties, I mean, there's been recent examples of counties that had two term term limits that have moved to three terms. And that, that becomes my concern as to, well, you know, why are those local jurisdictions saying, well, two terms is not enough? And, you know, why aren't we talking to those local juris jurisdictions to hear about, you know, why they made that decision to move to three terms, because I think we should learn from other counties' examples in designing any sort of structure of term limits. Um, that's my concern, because, you know, the executive branch and the legislative branch are different in how they function and, and how they work. So I, I do think that, you know, it's not an apples to apples comparison. But, um, you know, that, that is my concern. When we look at other counties that are moving to three terms, why would we not look at their example and say that, you know, that's something worth uh, looking at carefully? Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Riley? Also, if you think about it, the nice thing about this, if Councilman Penman does get his 10,000 signatures, again, the voters will have choices. They'll be able to make that decision. Nothing wrong with the voters making that decision. Also, if we just if we as a council would do this, then you would be robbing District A of having Dion on the council uh, this evening. You could think that's good or bad, and we'll leave that up in the air. But uh, <laughs> at least the people uh, in District A, right? <laughs> but they would be denied their uh, their representative if they couldn't have uh, Dion on the council. So thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Riley. Ms. Silas. Thank you. Um, I've been an advocate for the term limit bill from the time I, I came on the council. Um, I think that it needs to be decided by the voters. And um, I think that three terms is meaningless. And let's put it on the ballot and let everyone decide. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, uh, Ms. Dixon, I just want to remind everyone we're looking at Amendments 1, 2, 3 to Bill 23-028. Call the roll.
Mr. President? No. Mr. Guthrie? No. Mr. Penman? Aye. Mr. Jan Giordano? No. Mr. Riley? No. Mrs. Bolsaddles? Aye. Mr. Bennett? No. There being five votes, or excuse me, yeah, five votes in the negative, two votes in the affirmative. The uh, amendments one through three hereby are failed or have failed. Amendments one through two to Bill 23 029, Tax Credit Nonprofit Swim Clubs. Mr. Penman. Amendment number one on title page and third, fourth, and fifth lines in each instance after the word real insert and personal property. Amendment number two on page one on line 14 after county insert real and personal. Thank you. Um, is there a motion? Make a motion to pass uh, amendments number one and two to bill 23-029. Second. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Guthrie, was that you? Yes. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the amendments one and two to bill 23-29. Is there any discussion? Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie? Aye. Mr. Penman? Aye. Mr. Jan Giordano? Aye. Mr. Riley? Aye. Mrs. Bolsaddles? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative, amendments one through two are hereby approved. Eleven, call for final reading of bills. Bill 23-027, apartments B3, general business district as amended. Um, May I have a motion? Council President, I move to approve Bill 23-027 as amended. Thank you. you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. It's been moved and seconded to approve, or excuse me, yes, to approve the Bill 23-027 as amended. Is there any discussion? Mr. Penn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this bill, along with 2311, the original version, uh, has been difficult legislation. Bill 2311 was fundamentally flawed, and uh, there were some unattended errors in there that would have still allowed apartments in uh, mid-rise apartments in B3. It needed some revisions. And it seems like forever ago, myself and Council President Vicente stood in front of the Faustin Community Group with Kate, and we discussed revisiting 2311 uh, in a different version. I want to thank the community members uh, for their passion and input on this legislation. I also want to thank the community members for their help and input in the work group. I believe the work group produced a solution with re uh, reducing the footprint and impact from the originally proposed development. And if this bill were not to pass, I, would, uh, I believe it, it would have been a viable option. While the work group solution wasn't perfect, uh, I think this legislation isn't necessarily perfect. This bill pushes standalone apartments in the B3 zoning classification along the Route 40 corridor. In addition, if the county uh, continues to stop growth, the economic impact will be crippling. With that said, I do believe this bill is still a compromise and still allows apartments in B3 uh, under special development and mixed use. As it relates to the Mountain Road project, the bill does not stop development, and I'm concerned over the impact of the other B3 permitted uses. Obviously, one of those was suggested last week, which is transient housing for a rehab facility. If that were to come to fruition, I would uh, wonder how many would prefer the 48 senior living apartments. <clears throat> With all that said, Mr. I, Penman, hold on just a minute. I'm going to remind everyone in this room to keep your comments to yourself, or I'll ask you to leave these chambers. With all that said, I do understand the community's concerns and understand the importance of this issue. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Penman. Is there anyone else? Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jan Giordano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bolsaddles. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative, Bill 23-027 as amended is hereby approved. Bill 23-028, Charter Amendment Term Limits as amended. Or excuse me. That's right. It, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Bill 23-028, Charter Amendment Term Limits. May I have a motion? Council President, I move to approve Bill 23-028, Term Limits. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Riley. 
It's been moved and seconded to approve <coughs> Bill 23-028. Is there any discussion? Mr. Jandrodan. Well, I think going back again, um, and I'm just going to reiterate that both Councilman Penman and Councilwoman uh, Boyle Saddles both initially came out looking for a three term term limit, okay? They, what they didn't want was the succession, not two terms, but three terms. So the, the compromise that we tried to make back then was to add the succession, which is now being added to this bill. Um, and if he does get his 10,000, we'll have people vote and they can, they can choose which one it'll be. So thank you, Council President, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Jander. Anyone else? Mr. Bennett. Um, thank you. I have we, has anybody reached out to the Board of Elections to seek clarification on just what this will look like on the ballot if both are there? And like how it's decided, you know, both get 50% or more of the vote as separate questions, what happens? Um, I was just curious as what the process will be if uh, Council Member Penman is able to receive his 10,000 signatures having, you know, two questions that are about the same topic on, uh, you know, the election sheet, you know, which one gets listed first, how did they determine which one wins, you know. So if I may, there was some conversation, but to be honest with you sitting here tonight, I don't remember what the outcome was. So if we would desire, we can make that call tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Actually, not tomorrow, but uh, someone else can make it tomorrow. I'm not going to be here, so. Um, and we can get an answer to your question. I think that will be good for the community at large to know. We'll, we'll take care of that tomorrow. Someone will. Um, Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Abstain. Mr. Jan Giordano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bullsaddles. No. Mr. Bennett. Aye. So we have five votes in the affirmative, one negative, one abstention. Bill 23-028 is hereby approved. Bill 23-029, uh, tax credit nonprofit swim clubs as amended. May I have a motion? Make a motion, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Penman. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. It's been made a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Yes. So it's been moved and seconded to approve Bill 23-029 as amended. Is there any discussion? Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jan Giordano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bolsados. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero in the negative, Bill 23-029 as amended is hereby approved. Um, Bill 23-030, restaurants moratorium continuation. <laughs> May have a motion. Council President, I may I move to approve Bill 23-030 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Penman. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, that, Mr. Jandrodan. Not as amended, no. I'm sorry. That's okay. I want to restate your motion? Yes. Council President, I move to approve Bill 23-030. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Mr. Jandrodan. It's been moved and second to approve Bill 23-030, restaurants moratorium continuation. Is there any discussion? I do believe that um, we had some discussions today with uh, Mr. Richardson uh, in a uh, memo that we received from uh, planning and zoning and possibly the health department as well. So I think if this is going to, at some point, uh, just be standard practice down the road, uh, we may have to make some revisions to the zoning code. Um, so uh, that is something that we'll be looking at uh, over the next six months or so. Um, anyone else? Mr. Guthrie? Uh, just a quick, this takes this out another year, right? Yes, sir. And then at that time, we'll take a look at it. Yes, sir. See if it was a way to make it permanent. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Dixon. Mr. President. Aye. Mr. Guthrie. Aye. Mr. Penman. Aye. Mr. Jan Giordano. Aye. Mr. Riley. Aye. Mrs. Bolsaddles. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. There being seven votes in the affirmative, zero and a negative, Bill 23-030 is hereby approved. Agenda item number 12, enrollment of bills. Bill 23-027, Apartments B3, General Business District, 
As amended. Bill 23-028, Charter Amendment Term Limits. Bill 23-029, Tax Credit Non-Swim Clubs, as amended. Bill 23-030, Restaurants Moratorium Continuation, are certified as being the text finally passed. Agenda item number 13, unfinished business, we have none. 14, new business, we have none. 17, comments and input from attending citizens. And Ms. Dixon, before you uh, call your speakers, I want to remind everyone that you will be respectful of everybody in this room this evening. You will not be able to speak to any action items this evening. Um, and with that, call your first speaker. Kate Ganano, followed by Debbie Schreiber. How many speakers do we have? Nine. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. Name and address, please. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, my name is Katie Ganano. My address is 2320 Franklin's Chance Court, Falston, Maryland, 21047. Can you tell I live in Falston? Mm -hmm. um, oh, the clock's already started, okay. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank the county council mem members who have not only listened, but taken action to help each district and Hartford County as a whole to help preserve its charm and help catch up with infrastructure. I'd like to thank each of your aides for their assistance. They have been really wonderful throughout the past couple of months, especially Samantha Harris, Mr. Vincente, she's been really wonderful. Um, she has been outstanding with communication, and you know I've had absolutely no shortage of it. Um, I sincerely appreciate her and all of your aides. I also appreciate all of you who have gotten back to me. I know I am doggedly persistent. Um, I'm still concerned about overdevelopment, not only in Falston, but in Hartford County as a whole. Um, in my opinion, it's too much without infrastructure being caught up. Um, the infrastructure is just not here. I would like to know if we have, if you got, all have talked more about building moratoriums. Um, Mr. Guthrie, I know you have mentioned that in the past. Um, sorry, I don't have everything written down that I wanted to talk about, and I also dropped my spotted lantern fly um, <laughs> uh, information when I was leaving. Uh, nonetheless, um, oh, I, I wanted to speak just very briefly about the apartments in Bel Air, not, not near the ball, not, not the foster ones. Um, even though I know that the town of Bel Air is its own entity, everything is connected in Hartford County and that concerns me. I know you guys are not the decision makers on that, but it still <coughs> impacts infrastructure, traffic, uh, roads, schools, um, the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I want you guys to think about that some. I'm not exactly sure how you can help on that but I'm sure that you all are smart, so we can figure something out. I do have research about spotted lantern flies, so I'm just gonna go off the top of my head from the research that I've collected over the past um, couple of months. Uh, but there's a connection between spotted lantern flies and uh, overdevelopment, which is actually quite intriguing. I'm not sure if any of you, uh, either in this room, up there, have noticed an influx in spotted lantern flies uh, recently. In Maryland and in particular Harford County um, there are these trees that are called their nickname tree of heaven I'd have to look up the scientific um, name because I just don't recall but they're pretty much more like a tree of hell um, and the spotted lantern fly really really likes this particular tree and if they're not disposed of properly um, during excavation of properties the larva can live for an a surprisingly uh, long period of time. And then when logs and other debris is transported throughout uh, the community, they can hitch a ride. They're very durable little buggers, no pun intended. Um, and then can uh, mate, procreate elsewhere. And the overdevelopment, again, if the trees are not disposed of properly, um, they, it's, they can uh, spread rapidly. So there have been some vineyards I know that were impacted over the summer um, and other places. Next time I'm gonna uh, make sure I have my papers with the concrete evidence, but it's uh, riveting, at least to me. Thank you, thank, have a good thank night. Thank you, ma'am, thank you. 
Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Debbie Schreiber, 1114 Stromko Drive, Falston. Thank you, Mr. President and Council members for allowing us to speak. I just wanted to read the importance of Council District B in Harper County. The community members... Ms. Schreiber, can you speak up to the microphone oh, no, a little bit, please? Is this better? Yes. Okay. Now I can't see. Uh, the community members of District B deserve a representative that's in the position for the right reasons to do what's right and not be self-serving. You and your opinion, opinions matter and should be heard. As your county councilman, I am active and present in the community to listen to your, con to your concerns and issues. As your representative on the county council, I support you and your voice on the importance and pressing issues that, and will make positive changes. I just wanted to read what was written about a year ago. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Diana Sadowski, followed by John Malamo. Good evening, ma'am. Name and address, please. Hi, Diana Sadowski, 1113 Stromco Drive, Falston, Maryland, 21047. Across our state, we can see the results of bad politics and how it's destroying the cities. That destruction is no longer limited to that area, but it's spread to the suburbs and beyond. Just look at rising crime. Just this past Sunday, in broad daylight, people were robbed in the parking lot of the Walmart in Nottingham, not too far from here. This is just an incident that made local news. How much more is happening that we're not hearing about? Rising crime accompanies high density housing projects. So by all means, let's build more voucher, I mean, luxury apartments. Can we not learn from surrounding counties' experiences? For example, Apartmentsville, I mean Cockeysville. Harco will experience their same woes as the apartments rise out of Harford Mall and the Bel Air Township. Now what I find truly disturbing, and all of you should too, is that out-of-state investors are dictating what the growth of our county should look like. They don't know Harford County. They don't know its residents. They have their own state's influences, albeit Massachusetts, Virginia, or any other state. And I say stay put and improve your own state. Mr. Penman, <clears throat> for weeks now we've had to endure your excitement about your developer friend lowering the number of residences and adding the 55 plus designation to the proposed development in Falston. Well, after last Friday's Aegis article, and I'm sure you've seen that. I'm sure we've all kind of seen that. Ms. Sadowski? Yes. I think you should hold up there. You're getting too close to what we took care of this evening. So I'd uh, rather you go in a different direction, please. Okay. Well, Mr. Penman brought it up, so I fi figure it's fair game we can talk about what was said in that article. The legislation has been settled this evening. You can bring it up next week. Okay. Um, we're talking about paths of least resistance. Yes, ma'am. That's being presented to the community. Yes, ma'am. Which I think is total hogwash. And for anyone to be excited about putting transitional housing in the Falston community, irreparable. And to think that they want to put transitional housing close to where a liquor store is in walking distance or bars and restaurants, that's delusional. Our community has spoken out and still you don't listen or care. You've got to stop the game playing. There are lessons to be learned that not all investments are good ones or guaranteed successful. We've also invested in the community, but the big difference is that we're not interested in making a fast or guaranteed buck off the backs of those who live in the community. It's past time you put the community's needs first, but that requires listening to your constituents, and we know from experience that's not your interest. Our quest for happiness is truly an individual thing. For some, it's a new home, a new car, more zeros in a bank account, or perhaps self-perceived prestige in politics. However, keep this in mind. I've never seen a Brinks truck following a hearse. Thank you, ma'am. Can I say thank no, you? No, ma'am, your time is up. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Sir, good evening to you and your colleagues. John P. Malamo, 2402 Eagle View Drive, Bel Air, Maryland. Chapter 5, when nothing else works, blow it off. 
Well, one December 2020, while I was offering my comments, I asked that the council stop multitasking and listen to what I was saying. Council President Vincente called me that evening and told me that he was taking notes on my comments and that I owed him apologies. I re requested that Council President Vincente act to resolve my concerns regarding the zoning and land issues I identified. He agreed to do so. I agreed to apologize. At the 15 December 2020 Council meeting, I did apologize to Council President Vincente. We had two meetings regarding the issues I raised, then nothing. On 10 August 2021, I sent an email to Mr. Vincente requesting an update on his effort to resolve the issues that I presented to him at our last meeting. On 10 August 2021, I got a reply. Thank you for your reminder and patience. We'll set something up in the next week or two, and then nothing. Those issues are still unresolved, and requests for further updates are left unanswered. On 8 February 2023, I sent an email to County Executive Cassidy outlining land use and zoning issues, and I got an immediate response. Dear friend, thank you for reaching out to my office today via email. Your concerns and needs are extremely important to my office and to Harford County government. If you have emailed us today about a constituent service issue, a member of my constituent services team will respond shortly to further assist you. If you have emailed me about attending an event or asking for a proclamation certificate, a member of my scheduling team will reach out to you when a decision is made. All other requests will be reviewed within the next two business days and responded to appropriately. We appreciate you taking the time to email my office today and look forward to responding in a timely manner. I knew immediately that there is a difference between Mr. Cassley, the new guy, and his predecessor, Mr. Glassman, the last guy. Mr. Cassley is taller and most likely spends less time combing his hair. The rest, <laughs> maybe not so much. I know Mr. Cassley is the next guy. I'm not sure he's the right guy, a better guy, or just another guy. I never did get an answer or a response to my email. Now, there are three types of stories. The fairy tale opens with once upon a time, usually filled with personal sadness and tragedy, and ends happily ever after. The war story opens with, this is no fooling, filled with epic bravery and courage, and ends with everyone a hero. The political parody begins, when I'm elected, filled with mischief and silliness, and road apples, and it doesn't end soon enough. There are bright lines between hope, reality, and expectations. And finally, I'd like to extend my gratitude to all the members of the armed forces and all the people that serve in any capacity in this country and to the families who support them. Good night. Thanks, sir. Kate Perbilski, followed by Matt Chandler. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Name and address, please. My name is Kate Probilski. I live at 2217 Edinburgh Drive in Faustin. Um, <coughs> I am also the treasurer secretary of the Mountain Road Stony Brook Woodcrest Improvement Association. Uh, some of our residents are elderly or in poor health and would love to be here tonight, but it's difficult for them to get here, and they asked me to speak for them. First, I want to thank you all for voting for the bill um, that uh, – I scratch out some of the things I was going to say. Um, it's a start. It's a start, and it's a start in the right direction. Because um, we say no to more traffic. We say no to more accidents on Mountain Road at every intersection. We say no to paving over the Wildcat Branch or damaging in it, it in any way. We say no, no to school overcrowding. We say no to overcrowded rec programs. Our community and our children are too important to us. I'm quoting here from the Maryland Department of Planning, Models and Guidelines, number 24. In plain Eng English, an APFO, Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance, says that if the roads are too congested, if the school classrooms are too crowded, if the water system cannot provide enough water, if the sewer pipes in or treatment plant are full, or if there are not enough playing fields for recreational use, then development cannot be approved until the problem is corrected. The premise of an APFO is that growth should be directed to suitable areas where facilities are adequate. And then I wanted to address impact, impact fees. Uh, Lauren Heiser from 
Faustin, our Faustin person, she did a phenomenal job researching this topic extensively. And I found the facts astounding that other counties collect so much more from developers. Just one example is the 184 apartments at Hickory. If this, these same apartments were built in Frederick County, the impact fee would be $1.6 million. In Montgomery County, it would be $3.1 million. In PG County, it would be $3.65 million. And in Harford County, it would be a measly $220,800. That's $1,200 times 184 apartments. Harford County has an updated impact fee since 2004, when we were all still using a flip phone and beepers. <laughs> the council has dropped the ball. It's beyond time to make changes to impact fees in order to slow growth and generate funds to provide adequate public facilities before development occurs. And I just want to thank you again for your votes tonight and for listening to us. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please. <laughs> no applause, please. Please. Good evening, sir. Name and address. Good evening. Uh, Matt Chandler, 841 Ripple Stream Court, Joppa, Maryland, 21085. There's 3,299 homes in Faustin. I think the number of attendees, attendees for a community input meeting on August 11th were about 750. <coughs> And those are only the ones that could fit in the gym. That's a lot of people who are concerned about their community. Whether it be Perryman, Falston, or any other community or county as a whole, we need to take into consideration the burden on our existing infrastructure. When considering future bills, I implore you to focus on these concerns that we all bring up. Functioning hospitals, top schools, keeping crime in check, usable roads, functional public utilities, and a sustainable environment. We all have been elected to enact laws and protect these very basic but critical functions for the public Please continue to take this very seriously. Reflect on concerns citizens have and why so many have shown up over the months for a few key bills. There's much in common. I can't imagine it's like this every Tuesday, but I've only been to three of these meetings. Mr. Vincenti, Mr. Bennett, thank you for your prompt responses. Uh, I'm still waiting on Mr. Penman's call from uh, mid-October for questions about Bill 23027. There is no need to call back at this point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Brianna Coleman, followed by Rick Metzner. Good evening, ma'am. Name and address, please. Good evening, Brianna Coleman, 2347 Ingle Road in Faustin. Good evening. Nice to see you all again. I wanted to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to have discussions with me personally over the last few weeks and months. I hope this is just the beginning of more conversations and legislative changes that benefit all of Harford County. I've been coming to council meetings uh, since September because I strongly believe we need to and can make positive changes together. I hope to see the legislation on lowering the APF school threshold, Councilman Guthrie promised soon, as well as hopefully coming back next week to listen to the presentation about the hospital. I also hope that you are working behind the scenes and having conversations regarding the impact fees, which were just discussed. Those are the fees paid by developers for the impact the development will have on the community, with a large portion going to fund the construction of schools. The impact fees for apartments in Harford County are currently on clearance, compared to other counties, as you just heard. I think we can all agree that a student living in an apartment has the same impact as a student living in a single family home and the fees need to be adjusted to reflect that. Harford County is a great place to live, work, raise a family, and to visit. I think we can all agree on that as we wouldn't be here in this room if we didn't. In the scope of the world, the issues at hand are minuscule, but they are still issues that need to be addressed and corrected, and I hope we can continue to work together to make positive changes that benefit the citizens that live, work, and choose to raise their families here in Harford County. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Name and address, please. Yes. Richard Metzger, 2405 Edwards Manor Drive, Forest Hill, Maryland, 21050. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to bring to your attention a few thoughts that perhaps what we've been debating is nothing more than a smokescreen. Thanks for gathering and discuss a vital topic that I believe to bring bring us back to the, um, 
something that directly affects the economic pulse of our small county, and that is the future of warehouses and their indispensable role in e-commerce. In recent years, we've witnessed a monumental shift in the way we shop and in the way we do business. The rise of e-commerce has revolutionized the retail landscape, and at the heart of this revolution are warehouses. These expansive spaces bustling with activity have become the backbone of our society. They're the engine rooms where products are stored, processed, and swiftly dispatched to our doorsteps, ensuring that the virtual marketplace seamlessly connects with our everyday lives. For small counties like ours, where traditional economic avenues like residential construction, home sales, are facing challenges, many of us, we see the interest rates. No deeds are being recorded right now. No mortgages are being recorded, which in turn feeds to public safety, which is a lack of tax revenue coming in. So while we've been debating these issues, I just want to encourage everybody that the real issue we got to go back to is what could potentially happen if we don't really dig down and draw a conclusion on what we're going to do with these warehouses. Speaking of this for a moment, let us also understand the connection between these tax dollars as it pertains to public safety. Here's what I know. I live in Edwards Manor, which is a beautiful neighborhood situated in Forest Hill. In the past six months, we've had four break-ins and two stolen vehicles. Crime is on the rise, whether we want to face it or not. These things should not be happening in our neighborhoods. Imagine for a moment the alternative. If we choose to ignore the potential of what these warehouse spaces offer, we risk stalling the economic heartbeat of our county. We don't want our tax dollars to rise, but there's a gap between what's happening now with the rates and the current market that we need to sit down to discuss what it means from the uh, a perspective of public safety, because I'm concerned and I have a toddler. Supporting, uh, in choosing to support warehouses, we make a deliberate choice to shape our own destiny and we recognize that the future of commerce lies in the digital realm and warehouses. Otherwise, we risk becoming like Route 66. If anybody studied Route 66, Route 66 was taken over in the, uh, in the uh, modern age because they failed to adapt and they were taken over by the uh, road system not, adapt, uh, not adapting. So I'm just asking you to consider what it can mean for the future. Thank you, sir. And the last speaker this evening, Bill Whalen. Good evening, sir. Name and address, please. Name is Bill Whalen, 415 Cedar Springs Road, Bel Air, Maryland, 21015. My topic tonight is Board of Appeals Authority for zoning case decisions made. It's not a new subject and has been brought to the attention of the council and the administration via meetings for some time. In my comments tonight, I'm going to use the word board to mean the Board of Appeals and County Council because by the charter and the zoning code, the county council is the board of appeals, so that'll be east. The administrative law department has stated the board does not have any enforcement authority for the decision it makes. They go on to say the executive branch is not obligated to enforce final decisions of the board and pursuit of enforcement actions are a policy left to the discretion of the executive branch. This is not defined anywhere in the Hartford County Charter or Code. The council attorney has stated the enforcement powers of the zoning code is given to the director of planning. Unfortunately, the enforcement and penalties for non-compliance are not carried out. There's evidence to that and facts. The burning question is whether the executive branch must uphold decisions of the board and whether the board has the power to enforce its decision. I question why does the council allow the administration to control their decisions? What is the point in having the board make decisions? By email on October 18th, I requested an answer to two questions. 
One, do you believe the administration has the unilateral right to ignore the final decisions of the hearing examiner? And two, do you believe the county council should continue as the Board of Appeals? I received no response to those questions from any council member except a reply from Mr. Bennett. I responded and thanked him with comments. Here are some findings. There's 23 counties in the state of Maryland. Harford County is the only county where the council is designated as the Board of Appeals. I found through research that the Maryland uh, Code Land Use Subtitle 3 Board of Appeals Section 4-301 states, and I quote, the legislative body may not serve as the Board of Appeals. Sounds like we're the only non-compliant county. In conclusion, I think there's two choices going forward. As the legislative branch, the council, make an amendment to the zoning code that gives the council the power and authority for enforcement of board of seals decisions, or follow the requirements of the Code of Maryland and all the other counties in Maryland. Establish a board of appeals that is independent of both the legislative and executive branches of the county government, giving them the authority to make and enforce final zoning decisions. Of course, this will require a charter and code amendment and may be the best choice and more beneficial to the citizens whom you serve. Continuing as is is not an option, and we already know the problems it's caused. I believe, pursuant to the council rules of procedure, public participation, I think a response is due to me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. There are no more speakers, Mr. President. <clears throat> All right. Let's move to agenda number 16, business from council members. Um, Mr. Bennett. Hello. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, just want to cover a few things I've been up to um, and a few things that are coming up. Um, Harmerstown opened uh, just, what was it, this past week or two weeks ago in Havity Grace with Graw Alley. So if you haven't been down to downtown Havity Grace, um, to see Graw Alley yet, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it, all the murals that are up that you can look at to see some of the history of our city um, and just the art space that's now available for artists in, uh, in Havity Grace to display their art and work on their art. It's really exciting to see how far that's come. Um, also, I was able to attend the historical marker uh, installation ceremony with the Havity Grace Colored High School on 1028 and that was really um, exciting to be there for that moment you know there's been a lot of work done the past few years to preserve the history of the Havity Grace Colored School which carries a lot of pride in our community um, and it's important that that history isn't washed away at a time um, Dr. Stansberry and all the work of uh, the staff and the students of the Colored School should continue to be recognized um, so that was great I was there with Council President Vincenti um, and so that was um, a really nice day with beautiful weather. Uh, continuing to be part of the Vehicle Height Monitor Work Group. Um, you know, that work is moving slow and steady. I'm hoping to have legislation soon that would enable us to put uh, vehicle height monitoring systems in place in Harford County, um, uh, which is important for safety to keep trucks off of roads where they don't belong. Um, uh, in, in addition to all that, I was able to go to the Library Foundation Gala this past weekend, which was, um, it was a nice experience. It was good to support uh, our libraries and our library workers uh, for all that they do. I know that we're considering uh, legislation to give our county employees a 1.5% COLA, um, and I'm uh, I know our library workers aren't considered in that, and hopefully our county executive could see with, uh, you know, a slight uh, higher than expected uh, surplus in our our uh, our, uh, our operating budget, if there would be the money to send over to our library system to support our library workers and also getting that one and a half percent cola, I think that would be appreciated by uh, them as well. Um, Lastly, as a, a thing that uh, I've been up to, 
Uh, our superintendent, uh, Dr. Bolson, won State Superintendent of the Year. So we recognized him as a county council last night as Board of Ed Liaison. Um, you know, I attend all the meetings, but it was nice to be there to be a part of recognizing him. A few things coming up real quick. On 11-9, Citizen Care, which is in Havity Grace, is having an open house from 5 to 7. Um, it's a great opportunity to see what they're up to in helping take care of our uh, older community in Harford County. Uh, I can speak as a member of their board that they do a lot to make it uh, a great community within Citizens Care where people feel loved and welcomed. Um, you know, they, they do a lot of great, and Mr. Walter is a great manager of that facility. Um, on the following day on 11-10, the Discovery Center in uh, uh, the Bell Camp area is having its grand opening at 1 p.m. And so I encourage as many of you that are available to be there to just see what they have to offer. It's a really exciting facility. I've, I've now been there twice. And um, it's just so great that we're, we're getting our own little science center here in Harford County, and I can't wait to see how it grows over time. Um, and then also I want to celebrate my legislative aide, Heather, um, who finished Harford Leadership Academy and is part of the class of 2023. Um, you know, Heather does a tremendous job as a legislative aide, but she's so much more than that as a leader in our community and all that she does. Um, and so I can't wait to see what comes next for her and all the ways that she supports Harford County um, and just uh, her doing Harford Leadership Academy and me not is like exhibit Z of how she is oftentimes better than me. So thank you, Heather. Um, and then I just wanted to, uh, you know, it's public comments are so important and I learn a lot. Um, I had had people reach out to me about the impact fees after the uh, listening session in Falston. And so that's something I've been looking at carefully. But when you put the numbers together, like that really paints a picture of how desperately it needs to be addressed. Um, because that's, you know, that's money that the county can bring in that oftentimes doesn't even impact our current residents because it's being paid by out-of-state developers. And uh, so addressing that, we should not be leaving money on the table in that way. Um, but then also in comment from Mr. Whalen about the county council and our, our function as the Board of Appeals and how that compares to other counties, I always find those comparisons so helpful because like we, we are in our bubble and in our work, but to look outside of that to see how other places are operating, I think gives us a better picture of what best practice should look like and be like. Um, so I'll be definitely looking at that in the next few weeks to see, you know, how is the setup across the state and what do other counties look like um, to see if, you know, Harford County needs to change and if so, how. So I appreciate those comments tonight as well. That's all for me tonight. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Ms. Saddles. Thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, as we know, Veterans Day is on Saturday, and I would like to take a moment to thank any service members that are here tonight. Um, freedom is not free, and we do honor you this Veterans Day and always. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Saddles. Mr. Riley? Yes, I want to thank Commander Herman Schwears for the 22nd Honor Guard anniversary for the EMS uh, fire award ceremony. Um, the great work that those folks do. Also, I want to thank the company uh, Humpty Dumpster for the empty uh, stocking fund, 150 bicycles, a dumpster full of toys. And then lastly, I want to uh, talk about Troyer Road, especially my uh, residents in District D. We were able to get the county to hurry up on that road, and we got it a month earlier because there's a lot of issues with the intersection there in uh, uh, Black Horse. So thank the county for that. And I do also appreciate our veterans, not only here tonight, but in Harford County and uh, USA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Mr. Mr. Guthrie? Jump, you jumped all the way down to the end? You yes, forgot sir. Tony? Yes, sir. Poor Tony G? We're coming back this way. You're coming back? Yes. Well, let us know ahead of time when you change your direction. <laughs> A um, couple things. I also want to congratulate the veterans and uh, particularly my father-in-law who uh, left us about 10 years ago and, and uh, my mother-in-law since then has moved in with us and uh, she's 97 and I think she's healthier than me and my wife. 
and, and uh, but uh, he was uh, a World War II veteran, and uh, um, I've seen all the medals. He has about a dozen medals, and he's got the Purple Heart twice. He got the cross. He got uh, the German medal. He f fought in the German War, and. Um, when he passed, he still had uh, shrapnel on his body they could never take out uh, because he was wounded a number of times. So um, we think about him often, and uh, we have all his medals framed, and we have him hanging in a house. Um, I, I wanted to, uh, to, to uh, bring up the fact that I got a call from the Attorney General's office today um, because uh, I have been calling the office uh, numerous times over several months and sending emails and everything else in regards to the the, to the Richland uh, the, uh, reserves on the 152 from that, that uh, huge uh, um, construction of, of those houses there that's causing all the runoff of, of the water. Um, uh, Agent, uh, Agent Celia Glover called me, and first she, she told me that uh, she couldn't talk to me at first but because she had to clear with our attorney whether she could talk to me or not. So they, she, she, she wanted his name and phone number, which I gave him. He called her, and he said, yeah, you can talk to him. So he, he gave me the clearance, and, and then she called me back and uh, talked about all of the things that I had sent there. And they said the reason they hadn't called me up to this point uh, uh, about that mess that's there, they know about it, and uh, they took all my calls and everything, and they went, they sent the state uh, people there to uh, – uh, examine the, the, the uh, construction, everything that's going on there. And um, uh, they said, uh, they, she told me, Mr. Guthrie, uh, everything you told us uh, is true and more so, that there are violations uh, galore there and uh, that we intend to bring a, a suit uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, we can find uh, these contractors up uh, up to $100,000 per incident. And she said, there is all kinds of incidents with this runoff. Um, and uh, the big thing came from, in 2017, uh, the previous administration sent an amendment over to this council, that council then, to, to strike the 20-acre requirement that was in the law. Uh, the 20-acre requirement was that any construction in the county that uh, uh, where they are building houses or whatever they're building, they can only build on the first 20 acres at a time. And when that 20 acres is done, they can move to the next. Well, um, somehow the administration sent over an amendment and they, of, of a 55-page document that tells you all about all the um, uh, words that they use in the county and definitions of them. Like, starts off with accountant and goes all the way down the line, you know, all the way up to Z, and it's 50-some pages. So somewhere right in the middle of this, there's this little word that says that you can only construct 20 acres at a time. Well, the amendment came out from the, from the administration, the previous administration across the street, to strike that 20 acres out of that. And, and of course, it was very difficult to see, but they, they struck it. And what happens, that turned out to be this, uh, this big construction job uh, on 152 where this guy is constructing 100 acres and 388 houses. So instead of just doing 20 acres at a time, he, he tore down the whole area. And this is what's caused us in the last two summers to be flooded with mud and gook and everything in our waterways in Joppa Town and, and uh, Rumsey Island and the Gunpowder River, all the way out to the railroad bridge. It's a, it, it seems almost incredible to believe that you could take that huge body of water and turn the whole thing into a mud bath, but that's exactly what happened. And I uh, uh, appreciate the county executive. He's been on them too, and, and we've had uh, um, uh, uh, lots of people down there checking all the, all the, all the rivers coming down and all the uh, uh, water coming down the area, and it all's coming from there, and, and there's no question about where it's coming from. So uh, I, I bring it up now because we did have our uh, Edgewood Joppa Town community meeting last night, which was all, it's always well attended. We had about 40 or 50 people there, and I didn't have this information um, <clears throat> then, so I'm, I want to get it out there now because I know a lot of them watched the meeting. So 
we, we hope to see some uh, very interesting stuff happen in the next uh, uh, a week or month, a couple of weeks or month uh, for this contractor. I like to find a way that you could take these kind of contractors, okay, and, and you could, could for, um, forbid them from, from building anything in your county. When they have one that's this bad, there's got to be a way to not allow them to build anything in our county again because this, this is an absolute disgrace. Um, that I uh, did um, uh, miss the library thing because I got we all got assignments to go different places because we have a lot of things on our plates. Uh, I wind up going to the 30th annual birthday bash of uh, the Habitat for Humanity, who had an event out in uh, uh, Perryman um, above uh, um, Perryville, Perryville. Perryville. Uh, up above the uh, river, uh, and it was a great day. It was Saturday, and weather was perfect and I presented him with a proclamation. So that's where I spent my Saturday afternoon. Also was at the, the, the talk about the Discovery Center. Uh, myself and Tony uh, G went there uh, on, they had a soft opening uh, last week and me and Tony went and it's really an impressive place. So if any of uh, you uh, uh, ever get a chance, uh, please see that. It's for something great for the community. Uh, they do have a very large budget. Uh, According to what uh, we found out, or when we were talking to them, what, what their budget is a year, a year and it's about three hundred thousand dollars. So they need people to invest some money so they can get uh, they can get covered. One last thing is uh, also attended uh, along with uh, President Vicente and Tony uh, the Harvard Leadership Academy uh, um, graduation, and uh, uh, we are. Three of us are graduates from the Harford Leadership Academy, and and uh, when they had uh, their 20th year anniversary, I had the honor of being honored as one of the top 20 graduates of all time. So that was, uh, I, I really uh, was was impressed by that, and uh, and uh, certainly enjoyed it. Got the thing hanging on my wall. So with that, Mr. President, you can finish going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Guthrie, Mr. Pemmon. As Veteran Day approaches, I too want to thank our veterans that have served our nation to ensure our freedom and democracy. Uh, more specifically, those Harford Countyans that have served. Uh, Robert Brown, the chair of the Harford County James V. McMahon Commission on Veterans Affairs, just emailed the recent census data for the veterans in Harford County, and it's interesting. The data revealed that 9.7 uh, Harford County residents are veterans. That's about 18,896. Uh, breaking it down by war, um, we have 187 World War II residents, uh, 1,050 Korean War residents, uh, 5,315 Vietnam War veterans. Uh, Gulf War from 90 to 2001 is 6,059, and the Gulf War from 02 or later is 5,582. So I uh, just want to thank those who served. Um, I also want to thank uh, Robert Brown again and the commission members uh, for another successful Veterans Resource Fair that was held on October 21st. Fantastic turnout for the veterans that were able to receive the resources that they needed. Um, I'm also excited to acknowledge that on November 10th, the United States Marine Corps will be celebrating their 248th uh, birthday. It's a big day for the Marines and they always uh, are excited to celebrate that. Uh, I would also like to congratulate uh, Dr. Sean Bolson for winning the Superintendent of the Year last night. Uh, myself and Council President and uh, uh, Council Gian Giordano, uh, Councilman Bennett uh, attended uh, and presented a proclamation at the school board to Dr. Bolson. Um, lastly, I, I wanted to thank the county for follow up, uh, follow through on the second half of the 1.5 raise. I'm a firm believer in investing in our workforce. I believe we should do a better job, uh, specifically more than 1.5%. I think we can do an easier uh, job concentrating if we concentrate on small, uh, smaller government and focus on successful economic development. Uh, myself and Citizen Budget Advisor are actively reviewing and analyzing the recent release of the annual comprehensive report for FY23. Uh, we are in the process of getting some critical clarification and we'll have an evaluation out as soon as uh, possible. I did want to comment just on one of the public comments that was mentioned. At no point did I say uh, I was in support of transient housing uh, anywhere in, in District B. Uh, and Ms. Schreiber, I appreciate uh, you reading uh, my 
a bio or whatever is online, but I think I lived up to that with the vote of representing the district uh, on this vote tonight. So th I appreciate you acknowledging that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Penman. Mr. Jan Jordana. Thank you, Council President. Um, so uh, we've had a probably a week and a half or two weeks off, but <laughs> we didn't have a meeting here. But trust me, we were in meetings working on uh, working on the bill that we passed, um, talking to everybody, trying to make sure that um, we looked at what we could and make sure that we we got it right. So hopefully, you know, and we'll keep working. Um, we might disagree uh, up here on some things, but hopefully we can work together and get some things done. So I, I do appreciate all the hard work and efforts that everybody's uh, involved in. Um, I did attend the Hartford Awards uh, myself, Council President Vincenti, and I think, Dion, were you at Hartford Awards too? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> um, and Jacob. <laughs> Can't remember all those things. Come on. Um, but. Uh, if anybody hasn't been to Crumble Cookies, they've opened up uh, their, uh, we, we did the grand opening myself, Council President Vincenti. So we got there before they uh, opened to the public. Um, second location, the first one was in White Marsh. I think they did a soft opening that they weren't telling everybody, but the cookies were great. Uh, and I want a, th a big thank to, uh, to Aurora. She actually got us uh, a party pack. So we've been eating those, uh, those all day today. So we do certainly appreciate <laughs> Aurora for that. Um, uh, Beller had their annual awards, um, so the Archer Bowl and the and the Business of the Year that was uh, past couple weeks, and then a uh, couple of us, uh, Council President Vincenti, myself, and Councilman Penman were at University of Maryland to Stroke Smart. Uh, very important um, to make sure that everybody knows if you if you think you're having a stroke or feel like having a stroke, do not drive yourself to the hospital, but call 911. The reason is they can get prepped and get you ready when they come in there. The CAT scan, CAT scan is cleared. Um, they have blood clotting or clotting uh, drugs that they can get that out if they get to you within three hours. So very important, anybody you know, they think they're having a, a, a stroke, call 911, okay? Please, just if anybody remembers anything, if they're having a stroke, call 911. Um, so I do want to thank uh, all our veterans. I, I know uh, Councilman Penman's a veteran. Deanna, were you a veteran? No. Oh, okay. Well, I want to thank, <laughs> want to thank Councilman Penman for his service. Um, and I want to thank my dad was a Korean War vet. My sister was in the Navy. My brother-in-law was in the Army. Um, my nephew is on a nuclear ballistic sub. He's a nuclear missile tech. And my other nephew just left the Navy, so I'm the only one in the family that wasn't in the service. Um, but I want to thank all the servicemen, appreciate all their efforts. And um, uh, sad day, um, sad time is that uh, Gold's Bakery announced that they're going to close for good. They're not going to be able to reopen. One of my clients from years ago, um, very disappointing. I know they, they tried, had some hard times, and, and things just weren't done. But uh, sorry for their closing. And, and I do want to remind everybody that the health insurance cost went up 7% for the county employees this past year, and the county absorbed all that cost, okay? So I know they're getting the other 1.5%, but there was a 7% increase in the cost of health insurance. And if anybody's in the private market, they know what the cost of health insurance is for a family of four. It's six times to eight times what a county employee pays. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. They've never had an, a business or work for themselves. The, the average cost for a family of four is almost $3,000 a month for health insurance. So, um, you know, it's just, it's almost unsustainable if you're, you know, if you don't have a company that pays for it, but the county did um, pay the 7% increase last year. Um, so, you know, that is part of a raise. So. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Jan Giordano. Um, again, <clears throat> I'm going to start my comments by saying when you listen to each one of these council members, uh, they're out every day uh, working on behalf of the citizens, uh, checking in our business, in our, our businesses, and uh, supporting the county as a whole. And, you know, we're by charter, this is a part time job. 
<laughs> and I can tell you it's anything but a part-time job. Um, but you heard many of the events that they spoke to that we attended. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on a few things here. Um, it's an honor for me each year for the past five years to present to the Hartford Leadership Academy and to be able to sit uh, next to either the mayors of our municipalities or the county executive uh, to explain to them how government works and uh, bring them up to speed with some of the issues that we have uh, throughout the county. Uh, so I had that opportunity to uh, present to them again the other day and then also attend the graduation and congratulations, Heather. Um, it is a long process, uh, but it is very beneficial and um, you'll, you'll learn things there even if you're a lifelong resident of the county, you learn many things through that academy. And I highly recommend that anyone that has an opportunity to do it, uh, take advantage of it. Um, also, we had an opportunity to sit in this chamber on the other side and present to the state delegation as they were here to listen to uh, the county's legislative priorities. Uh, they did remind me when I stood up at the microphone that I only had three minutes. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but he took four. <laughs> um, also had the opportunity and the pleasure and the honor to, to sit uh, through the Hartford Business Roundtable for Education's annual meeting. Uh, we do that every year. We also went to the Hartford County Tourism Summit and sat through that, listened to all of our partners uh, throughout uh, the tourism industry here in the county and what a great value it is uh, that it, it brings not only revenue to the county, but it also brings a tremendous amount of support for all of our uh, local businesses as well and nonprofits. And, and when I talk about tourism, and we, you heard Jacob uh, speak to Harmerstown and Haverty Grace, uh, Alan Fair is the gentleman that bring, that's bringing that out of the ground. And I, I've known Alan almost all my life, and I've, I don't know any other individual in this county that has put his time, talent, and treasure to support the arts in Harford County, and specific, specifically the city of Havre Grace. Uh, he's done an outstanding job there, and I wish him all the best in the future. Um, we talked about the Color School, outstanding uh, facility there. Uh, again, supports our heritage, our local history. Um, the uh, Dr. Bolson, with his recognition you spoke to. So these are just a few of the things that I wanna speak to. When we talk about honoring our veterans, uh, we here on this dais honor our veterans every day, not just on Veterans Day. We do our best to recognize them. We do our best to show them our gratitude and support every day. So I wanted to point that out. And then finally, in closing, I want to express my deepest condolences to Henry Holloway, his family and friends, uh, due to the passing of his wife, Barbara. Uh, she was truly a pillar in the ag community, and she will be missed by all who knew her. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thank you.